This video is going to be a short introduction to the different tools and options of Autodesk Inventor 2022. Now every year when they update Inventor, so usually the changes are very small. Sometimes they can be a little bit more significant, um, but this home page has looked pretty similar now for a while. Uh, we call this the home page because it is the page that opens up when you open the program. And also if you were to navigate away from this, uh, it's the home button that will bring you right back. Now, some of the things right off the bat that you need to know are these um, are the different part files available to Inventor, part assembly, drawing, and presentation. When you actually start creating files, uh, this bottom area here should populate with the things that you've worked on recently. It's a nice shortcut to be able to open things that are in progress or that you've done recently. I use it all the time. The thing that we're probably going to be using the most is going to be the part file. So let's click on that and open it up. What we see here is your standard part file uh, workspace here. There are lots of tools. Uh, just to point out a few things, this is the toolbar area here. And there are several different tabs with different toolbars. They all have um, very different and unique things that they do. Um, so pay attention to your tabs because sometimes you might get lost or you don't see the tool that you're looking for. Um, but commonly you can be, if you're looking for sketch tools and you're in the 3D model, you're not going to see the tool you want. So uh, pay attention to those tabs. Also, uh, the one tab that is a different color is in orange is the file tab. Here is where we save documents, open documents, um, export CAD formats. If we want to uh, export as an STL, this would be how we do it. Export CAD format. And then in this Dropbox is how we can get to all the different files available with STL being right at the bottom. This area that we see here to the left, right now there's only three or four things here. But when you are working on a part and you have a lot of features and complexities to it, this can get very, very long. It is call, uh, officially called the browser, and it serves as sort of a historical navigation area where you can go back and forth uh, and um, look at things that you've done, edit things you've done, things like that. On the right side of the screen, you will see some navigation tools here. This is, uh, I believe, the navigation toolbar where I have different modes of being able to move things on the screen around. Um, and then the what we see as a square right now, but is in fact a cube, is the uh, famous Autodesk View Cube, where I can grab the cube, move, uh, excuse me, move it around, but it also demonstrates exactly where the 3D screen is, what side I am looking at. Uh, so it's a good reference to quickly be able to see what your orientation is. You can click it, you can drag it, you can click the arrows to turn and rotate, and you can always click this little home button to kind of take you back to that uh, 3D isometric view, looking at it from the corner here. Uh, let's see here, what else is important? Uh, to new users, one of the most important things is the help functions or command. If I were just to type in here, uh, browser, you, th you see things start to populate, um, and each of these is kind of a quick link to different uh, areas. Um, and if I type in something and click enter, it takes me to the help forum, the support forum on the Autodesk website, which is packed full of information, and sometimes the hardest part there is finding what's relevant, but it's a really good place to start looking for stuff. Um, this is one area that's actually really important uh, because here you can view getting started videos to give you a lot of information about the program. You can access tutorials, guided tutorials that help you uh, learn how to use some tools in a structured environment. And the help topics are very, um, are very helpful, I suppose, at different times. But this is also a place where you can look things up. Uh, like I probably forgot uh, uh, the names of a couple things. I can look it up here. What I know there is a browser. What does it look like and what does it do? Um, coming back to the 
main screen here. Probably some of the tabs that you're going to use the most are the 3D model tab, certainly the sketch tab. Um, when you get to drawings, you'll be doing more an, um, annotations. Um, the measuring tool inside inspect, uh, the inspect tab is very useful. In tools here is where you can change settings from inches to uh, millimeters and things like that. This is also where you can, uh, the measuring tool also exists in here, but you can assign materials. So if something you wanted to appear uh, to be made of a certain material, you could choose it here. You can change appearance, color, etc. as well. Um, so there's a lot going on with some of these different tabs. A lot of these over to the right, we actually won't use uh, much, but it's good to know they are there. The Get Started tab also will take you back home. It'll take you to the tutorial gallery. I can also open uh, new projects from here. And this one last thing that I want to point out in this video is the Minimize to Panel button. This button often gets clicked by a student and they get really anxious because things start disappearing. Um, this is essentially a customization tool so that users can show the tools that they want without too much. Um, I like to leave it here in the default because I like having my, uh, the, my maximum number of tools available. But as users get much more advanced, they usually like to have more workspace and they will uh, like to access tools in different ways. So for me, um, this is what I prefer but to each their own. And it doesn't bother me how you um, lay out yours as long as you have uh, something that you can um, repeat every time that you do it, something that you know where things are and you're not feeling lost. Um, so that's a, my introduction to Inventor. Hopefully you found it helpful. Um, at this point, my students, what I'm gonna ask you to do is go ahead and do the scavenger hunt. We're gonna take some pictures and post them so you can start attaching uh, names of, of these tools and areas um, and so that you, we can speak about it later. And if I reference, hey, check the browser, you know what I'm talking about um, and vice versa. So that's your introduction with much more to come.